Okay. So we have a cylinder. It's got a volume of 300, uh, 300 cubes. Okay, centimeters cubes fill that cylinder, and it's 10 centimeters high. We want to figure out the area of this circular base. Okay, so we know that 300 is equal to the area times 10. So we, if we want to undo that times 10, we can divide both sides by 10, and we get an area of 30 oh. centimeters squared. So that's part A. <clears throat> to work out the radius of this circle, well, how do I figure out the radius of that circle? Well, I know that pi r squared is going to give me the 30 centimeters squared. Well, I want to find out the radius, so I need to get rid of the times pi. So I'm going to divide by pi on both sides to get rid of that times by pi. And I'm going to get rid of that squared with the square root. So you end up with r is equal to square root of 30 over pi. Okay, if I want to work out the decimal value of that, that's approximately 3.09, or about three, I'm going to round that to 3.1 centimeters. So that seems about right. So we get a 3.1 centimeter radius. That's going to give us, you know, nine about 27, a little bit more than 27 squ centimeters squares there, times 10, yeah, this is gonna give us about 300. Okay, so that is, we can solve by undoing these parts. Right? We have to set up the equation. So it's key to be able to set up an equation and equality here. This is our equality here, and we undo the equation by solving. Okay, so if this, problem here we have a 10 by 10 by 10 cube and we have a five di centimeter diameter hole cut through it okay so the what volume of metal would be required to make this object well we want to figure out the volume of the cube and then to subtract the volume of the cylinder okay so the volume of the cube is going to be 10 by 10 by 10 or 10 cubed minus the volume of the cylinder is going to be the area, which is going to be pi times r squared. In this case, if the diameter is 5, we know we have to use half of the diameter or the radius. And we're going to times it by the thickness. The thickness is going to be through here, which is 10 centimeters. Okay, And then this works out to be the volume of object. So the when I work this out, I'm going to end up with 1000 minus, <clears throat> this is going to be 62.5 pi. Okay, that's going to work out to be about 803.65, so I'm going to round that to 803.7 cubic centimeters. So when we talk about volume of any object, we really want to talk about an area times thickness. Okay. Now, as long as the thickness, the, the area is the same, there's no problem because we can just use the same area for the entire thickness of the object. So in this case here, if I have this slice of bread, you know, the area of the slice of bread is 120. So this area is going to be 120 centimeters squared. Every slice is the same. So I'm going to give that area a thickness of 25. Okay, so... The volume then of that piece of that loaf of bread is going to be my area, although I really don't know how I calculate that area. Okay, as long as you're able to get that area, we can take that same area and just give it some thickness. And notice the units are going to give us volume. So 25 times 120, that's going to give us 3,000 cubic centimeters.
So that's important that we we can generalize, although that's, you know, the slice of bread, we it'd be kind of hard to calculate that area because it's kind of got a round a bit here and kind of rectangular bits there. But if we already know the area of that shape, we can work out the volume by taking area times thickness. And even more complicated objects, like things like this, this pyramid looking shape, as long as I can t multiply, if I can take that area and give it some thickness, right, we can get the area volume of that, of the, that stepped object. And in essence, it starts looking like the volume of a pyramid. Now we do have a formula for the volume of a pyramid, but we didn't really justify it. How can we get that formula? Well, we can imagine that we take thinner and thinner slices. So see the, these thick slices, kind of not quite accurate, but if we took thinner and thinner slices and just added up the area times these really small thicknesses and just stack them all up, we can get a very, very, uh, very, very accurate uh, calculation for volume of these kind of weird shapes. In fact, that's what we end up doing later on when we start looking at things in calculus. But we still use the same principle. Area times thickness is volume.